Good morning. Good morning. Our celebration of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, blessed be his name, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we in the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the lessons. A reading from the prophet Nehemiah. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The appointed psalm for this morning is Psalm 19. We will read it responsibly by whole verse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells us scale to another, and one night parts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. For his silence is gone out into all lands, and the rest has been for a word. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the outer of the edge of the heavens. And runs out to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from the story of The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than money, than money can come. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how long he can be offense? Bless me for my secret faults. Above all, Keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my
a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, this is the gospel lesson that every seminary student should preach the first time when he comes home to his home church to understand the flavor of what's about to happen to him. Because today's gospel presents us with Jesus' first act of public ministry described for us as it is in Luke's gospel. Now, following his river baptism, and his long wilderness fast and temptation, Jesus returns to his home country, Galilee. And reports about him now have started to spread throughout the land, probably as a result of some of those healing miracles and some of those teachings in those synagogues. So when he comes back home this morning, it's quite a big day in that synagogue. You see, everybody's there eager to hear the local boy who's making now a name for himself. And Jesus enters that synagogue on that Sabbath morning, and for him now, being a little bit older, it might seem a little bit smaller than it looked when he was a child. But otherwise, nothing about this familiar place has changed. And you see, Joseph and Mary have prepared him well for his life. You see, they've raised him faithfully in their ancestral religion. See, he attended regular Sabbath school and maybe youth group if they had that at that time. But they brought him to synagogue every week as a baby, as a child, and yes, believe it or not, even as it's hard to believe, a teenager. And it wasn't always easy, especially when he might have been a baby. And so, you see, Joseph and Mary must be considered patron saints for all the parents now in this day and age who make sure that their children get to church school, who see their sons and daughters belong to the church youth group. No, it's not easy. Fonzo will tell you, the vet will tell you, raising children is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> but these parents know that the child who participates regularly in the community of God's people is likely to have a strong faith in adulthood and a firm foundation during every crisis within life. And so Jesus returns back to that Nazareth synagogue, thankful for the upbringing that he's received from his parents there. And you see, he's asked to read the lesson from the prophets. 
Now, keep in mind, there is no lectionary to consult, no, to determine this reading. The choice you see is up to him. Nor is there a book to flip through, to look for. Instead, a bulky scroll is given to him, brought up to him, and placed upon the lectern. And Jesus, searching for a familiar text, unrolls to a place near the end of that scroll in the prophet Isaiah. And in a strong voice, with anticipation, he reads aloud these words, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. When he finished with that brief passage, Jesus rolls up that scroll and returns it to the attendant and then takes his seat. Now, in the synagogue, it is custom for the teacher to sit rather than to stand. And so when Jesus sits, everyone is looking at him, expecting some kind of commentary, some explanation of that text, a text well known to many of them. But you see, there are no professional clergy there. The synagogue president can invite an appropriate person to comment on the text. And often these remarks are somewhat less than inspiring. While people there are biblically literate, commentary on scripture by such speakers is often no more than a simple resuscitation or recitation of lessons. All of them learned at a somewhat early age. And so the congregation knows what's going to be said before it is said. And the only question is to whether it has been said correctly or not. But not so today. You see, when Jesus sits down, all the people are looking at him. And he looks around at them. Those familiar faces from his early years, older in appearance than maybe before. Some of them, his childhood friends, now present with their own children. The parents, the friends, now senior citizens. And so Jesus, you see, begins with a real zinger. Something maybe more than a zinger, though. A sentence, you see, that remains fresh and provocative, down even into our own time. You see, Jesus has set free the scripture passage that he has just read. In other words, he has just let the lion out of the cage. He overthrows the ho-hum expectations of the people sitting around him. And here is what he says. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. You see, Jesus does the unexpected, the unimaginable, on that memorial Sabbath morning in Nazareth. You see, in today's jargon, he has claimed those ancient prophetic words as his own personal mission statement. The reason why God's Spirit came down on him like a dove at his baptism was to empower him to do precisely this, to bring good news to the poor, to release the captive, to recover the sight of the blind, let all who are oppressed go free, announce that sweet year of jubilee when God's justice will reshape society. You see, Jesus has made this his mission statement, and he will not content to just leave it on a string of high-sounding words. Everything, everything that flows in his life as presented to us in this gospel amounts to the living out of that prophecy he claims for himself that Sabbath morning in Nazareth. He keeps doing these things, and he keeps doing them every chance he gets, every time he turns around. And ultimately, as we read and hear and learn, it will kill you. Some people, you see, welcome what Jesus does, but others do not because it upsets their unfair advantage. It questions their complacency, and it pushes them to recognize their habitual 
and fidelity to God. They seem to find their discomfort increasingly intolerable, and they think that his judicial murder later on down the road will bring an end to all of this, this matter. But of course, we know that they will be wrong because Jesus rises alive from the dead and continues even to this day to do what he talked about that Sabbath morning so many years ago. Now, the way that Jesus works that out is through his mystical body, the church. And through each and every one of us who are baptized into that body, Jesus strives to live out his mission statement bringing good news to those who don't have any good news, setting free those who are chained in captivity, opening the blind eyes, helping the oppressed and the exploited find a life, and the unrolling of a fourth plan that sets out God's reign where justice and peace prevail for all. And you see, my friends, Jesus still does these things because the church still does them. The poor gain hope, whether it's their souls or their bodies that are starved. The captives experience freedom, whether they're prisoners in jail or prisoners in a mansion. The blind still receive their sight, whether it's cataract surgery over at the hospital or the scales of prejudice falling from the eyes of a bigot. The oppressed are set free, whether opposed by a political regime or a chemical dependence. Yes, yes, when Jesus reads that passage in that Nazareth synagogue that morning, he announces a mission statement for himself, for his body, and for the church. And this morning, today, we heard Shalon reading from 1 Corinthians, and that's another important passage for how the body of Christ, the church, is to live out that mission statement of Jesus. You see, as we strive to keep faithful to those words that Jesus read aloud and lived out, we too can pay attention to three main points that St. Paul insists on that passage. Number one, all members of the church have gifts of poor ministry. The second, the members of the church have different gifts for ministry. You see, we are not just all clones of one another. And the third point that Paul makes is that different gifts come to life in the context of the whole. Jesus read those old words from Isaiah and claimed them for his own. We too can do the same, sentence by sentence. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed us to bring good news to the poor. The Spirit of the Lord has proclaimed release to the captives. The Spirit of the Lord has sent us to help the blind recover their sight. The Spirit of the Lord has sent us to free the oppressed. The Spirit of the Lord has sent us to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And yes, my friends, today this scripture has been fulfilled in our hearing. Amen. 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 In the sure and certain hope of the risen Lord, let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally the God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, in the God from not made, of the one being with the Father, who in all things for me, for us in the power of salvation, and came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy 
Spirit, you can gain your heart and the Virgin Mary, and we'll say again. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and in accordance with the Scriptures, he is ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and then his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, to the Father and the Son and his worship and glorified. He may have spoken through the prophets. We do believe in one holy Catholic and solid church. We may acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We will look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the Lord of come. Amen. Amen. Prayers of the People are Form 4, found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the Church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Especially we pray today for Joe, our president, Henry, our governor, and John, our mayor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless <coughs> all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray today in our Anglican cycle of prayer for the Hong Kong Shing Hong the flowers on the altar are given to the glory of God by Linda Sadler and thanksgiving for St. Mark's Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We lift up to you this morning, Norm, Tony, Rosetta, Dwayne, Francis, Aubrey, Gladys, Gail, April, James, Walker, Mary, Roger, Julie, Aaron, and Charleston Police Chief Luther Reynolds. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Hear We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Turning with me to page 833 of the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray together a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Page 833, verse 62. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, beauty. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much see. Soul is to end the soul. We understood it is to have shame. Be loved as a lover. For it is the giving we receive. It is the pardoning of the great heart. And it is the dying of the good soul of the eternal life. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor using the form on page 360.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight you with your will. And walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us exchange the peace of Christ safely with one another. So many out here on this cold, blustery morning. Glad to see you. You woke up, made it out, got bundled up, and made it here today. That's great. That's great. Welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church. Welcome, St. Francis. Welcome to our friends at home. And uh, in case you're wondering why there's a second camera here, we've got one for our live stream, but then we also have one that's being run for the taping of the service for our friends at St. Francis who are also at home and at about. I got several emails from people who are out and about, and they were telling me that, yes, they still watch us on the live streaming there as well. So good to see you, especially at the steeple. It's good to hear from you, too. Good to have everybody in one place, kind of at one time, as well as we can. I want to also thank everybody for turning in their pledge cards and their campaign, and we're getting that to a close now. We're putting together a budget. Uh, last week, we uh, were going to do the annual meeting, but... Uh, weather being what it was and, and numbers being what they were, we couldn't get it done. So we kind of postponed that, delayed that till today. So St. Francis, I'm sorry, not St. Francis, St. Mark's is gonna be doing their annual meeting and the reading of the reports after this service. Uh, let's see here. Choir did a beautiful job this morning. I loved having, having you all there, beautiful. If anyone still is interested in singing with the choir, please come. 
join us here at 8.45 in the morning. They'll run through their practice, get ready for service, and then they'll sing as well. Uh, flowers for February. We still have some flower spots for February available. Those that would like to sign up, the book is in the narthex. Um, anything for St. Francis? We're good on that? Loretta, we're good? All right. Anybody with a birthday this weekend? All right, anybody with an anniversary this weekend? Yeah, it was probably too cold to get married anyway, so. <laughs> Walking in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer A continues in your order of service and on page 360, yeah. 61, thank you, in the Book of the Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and the Father of God. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. To suffer, he took a cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ is God. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer thee these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and Amen. And we also say that Christ has taught us we are bold to say.
Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the gates. Hallelujah. Are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them and remember it that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Oh, in peace, the law and the serve the Lord.